if we do not take upon take that responsibility upon our shoulders, in essence, we are rejecting the commission of being a disciple of Christ. That's what difference it makes. It makes a difference whether or not we are going to be obedient Christians or if we're going to be sitting back in the chair. You know, it absolutely positively makes no sense, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think that we should be doing? Sitting around with extra large pizzas that are topped with uh, tumor filled, uric acid filled, ground beef stuffing our faces and just letting the whole world march down to their way to perdition? Is that the love of Christ? If there's a possibility that somebody can awaken and realize the fact that what the Bible has told us is true by showing them from what's going on in our society that the Lord our God has already given us knowledge of such things. If we have that opportunity, it more than behooves us to take that opportunity. It is our responsibility as Christians. And for those of you out there that are not Christians, that's, and, you know, I won't even go there. I just want to encourage you, please, seek a relationship with Jesus Christ. I can't say this enough every time I get on the air. If there was ever t a time that you wanted, if there was ever a time that we needed to know who Christ Jesus was, not as a theory, not just as history portrays him, but as a personal individual, as a friend, as a counselor, as our comforter, as the leader of our thoughts and desires. If there was ever a time that we needed to seek out this knowledge of Jesus, it's now. And if you're out there and you don't know whether or not the Bible is true, I want to let you know something. There is not a book in this world beyond the Bible that can give you true accurate instruction on how to meet Jesus. And when I say that, let me, let me, let me be very clear on uh, my statement right now. The books of philosophy, the books of science, the books of history, in which many of us are looking to find out whether or not Jesus is real, and if the power of God is real, will not give us the answers to those questions. They cannot be found there. Science says God must not be real because we can't put him under our microscopes, we can't put him in a petri dish, and hence, so therefore, hence, he must not be real. Ladies and gentlemen, the problem with this, the problem with the scientists on this issue is that they're putting God in the wrong laboratory to find out whether or not he's real. Did you hear what I said? They are placing God in the wrong laboratory to test and find out whether or not he is real. Because the way that the Lord is presented to us in the scriptures, the only laboratory in which God can be accurately tested to see whether or not he is in all actuality real is within the human heart. So if you truly desire to know whether or not God is real, 
then you must do a correct you must do an experiment used in the correct laboratory and that means that you have to take the time to actually study the word of God pray to God and then see if he is real that's the only way you can do it that's the only way you know the Bible tells us in the book of um, Luke chapter 21 starting at verse 34 take heed to yourselves lest by any means your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting which means overeating and drunkenness and the cares of this life so that day meaning the last day the end of all things the judgment comes upon you unawares for as a snare it shall come upon all them that dwell upon the face of the earth watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass that shall come to pass and stand before the son of man ladies and gentlemen this is the situation we're allowing our minds to be ensnared by overeating And you say, wow, this... do you know that, this is so interesting, as I'm doing some of my research, just looking at the economy situation, it was so funny that I stumbled upon an article that was saying that obesity is drawing on the California economy. It's actually one of the biggest problems of the California economy. Obesity! bombarding us, these great, great deceptions are going to be the means to overthrow you, ensnare you in the devil's camp, and then bring you to utter destruction. Through overeating, put the drumstick down. Put, just, through overeating. And if you think, you, you think that Christ did not think this was a problem, why do you think that he fasted for, for those 40 days and 40 nights. Do you realize that was the first major test that Christ went through at the very inception of his ministry after his baptism? Do you know why that was the very first major test that Christ went through at the very inception of his ministry after his baptism? Because according to the book of Romans, Christ is the second Adam. And the first Adam fell through appetite. The indulgence of appetite. He ate that food. He went after the desires and lusts of his heart. He, he fell to appetite. And so to prepare for his mission, to, to once again to redeem, to redeem the family of Adam and to redeem the dominion which Adam lost through debased, uncontrollable appetite, Christ gained the victory of appetite or gained the victory over appetite. Notice that was the first thing the devil tried to tempt him to do. Turn the stone into bread. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. But we have to come to that realization. Many of us are being ensnared through overeating. And all of this has, con all of this, all of this is so pertinent, ladies and gentlemen. It's so pertinent. Because what I, what I realize clearly is that the facts of what's going on in this world is not hitting us with the weight of importance that it should because we have not been cooperating with the Spirit of God and following the counsel of, counsels of God so that our minds can be in a ready state to receive the truth. So hence, when the truth comes to us, it bounces off of our head like a handball off of a wall. And it finds no place within our hearts. It makes no sense to us. We don't see the relevance. And for many of us, it's because we're eating too much. We have one meal every day, one continuous meal. From the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, we're eating. And, and don't believe... That, that that thing, you know, that, 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 that theory that's put out there by the doctors, you know, you should eat, you know, little meals all throughout the day. 
you know, little meals off the that is a lie. The human body needs five to six hours to properly digest every meal. Okay? So what happens let me explain to you the relevance of all this, okay? What happens if you eat in between meals? What happens is whatever food you had in your stomach prior to this to that Cheeto that you put in your mouth, all right? Or that slice of pizza that you just had to have, all right? That you just had to have after you just had a full course meal, not, you know, not even a whole two hours ago, all right? What happens is your stomach leaves off digesting that previous meal and begins to just focus on digesting that slice of pizza. 